Who will win in a five round fight between Benjamin Moore Advance and Sharon Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel? <laughs> We're adding, we're adding like graphics to that, right? Like fireballs and explosions and stuff. Well, cause we, if we don't, it's just gonna look like me slamming together paint cans. I'm gonna look like a jackass. We're not doing that. We're not doing any graphics. So just, it's just gonna look like me being an idiot. Cool. No, no, it's fine. Just, just dude, just, just roll the intro. Well, I've seen the fruits of a labor. What I have, I built with my own. Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with Practical Painting. We are professional painters here to help you with your various painting endeavors. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing two high-end trim paints, Advance from Benjamin Moore and Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel from Sherwin-Williams. This will be a five-round bout. Two cans will enter, only one will leave. Was that too intense? We can dial it back a little bit. All right, it's fine. Before we get into the tail of the tape, I just wanted to clarify the context in which I'm comparing these two products. I'm talking about laying them down with a brush and roller or a combination of the two on interior trim, so not spraying. If you wanna hear about uh, kind of the application of spraying and how they measure up through that process, you can check out Eric Reason's video. He did a fairly comprehensive review of these two products in that particular application, and uh, that's just not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about interior trim, so your baseboard, your chair rail molding, your crown molding, door frames, doors, all that good stuff. Uh, and applied in a little bit more traditional manner. So again, we're not talking about spraying. All right, let's go to the tail of the tape for this five round bout. Fighting out of the blue corner is Advance from Benjamin Moore. This is a waterborne interior alkyd. It retails for right around 65 bucks and it's a hybrid product, which I will get to that in a second. It comes in matte, satin, semi-gloss and gloss. So those are the four sheens that this particular product comes in. And for cleanup, you're looking at soap and water cleanup with a mineral spirit rinse on your brushes when you are all done. So just something to be aware of. And fighting out of the green corner is Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel from Sherwin-Williams. It comes in three sheens, satin, semi-gloss, and gloss. It retails... Okay, so here's the thing about retail prices from Sherwin-Williams. They're not... They're not like super accurate so i think this retails for like 95 bucks however if you actually go to buy it from almost any sharon williams there's probably a sale if you have an account you're definitely not going to pay 95 bucks and it always comes out to around 65 bucks so if you can get it anywhere around there that's pretty much what you're going to be paying for this and uh let's see also cleanup is soap and water and you do also need to do a mineral spirit rinse on your brushes once they are cleaned out with these soap and water so that's what you're looking at. That's what we're dealing with. These are both hybrid products, which means the paint manufacturers took a water-based formula and added oil resins to them, uh, which then starts to take advantage of some of the properties of an oil-based paint, but kind of keeps the ease of use with a water-based formula. And we will kind of cover that as we move along in this video. If you guys wanna see a little bit more specific reviews of both of these products. I actually did a review of Emerald and also of Advance just individually. I will link to them up here. Round one, fight. Right, first round is all about durability. Both these products are hybrid products. So as I mentioned before, they have oil resins in them. And so once they actually cure all the way through, they are both super durable. They're gonna hold up better in those high touch areas like around doorknobs, window sills, mantles, all that kind of stuff. Anything where you're gonna be like putting something on top of them, uh, they're gonna hold up way better than like a pure latex trim paint, like something like a Duration Semi-Gloss or Regal Select Semi-Gloss, something like that that's a little less, less expensive than these guys. Uh, that being said, I would give a slight edge in durability to advance. Once this product cures all the way through, it is stupid, stupid hard. Um, so it really has some good applications for, again, like I said, like a big bay window that you're putting plants on or like a fireplace mantelpiece. That's also why it gets used a lot on kitchen cabinets and things like that. So I'm gonna give round one to advance. Round two, fight. Round two is all about workability and ease of use. So sometimes when folks buy a premium paint product, they think it's gonna be easier to work with, and that is often not the case, particularly with these two products. Hybrid trim paints are 
in general, quite a bit trickier to work with than some more, I'd say like traditional water-based formulations for trim paint. Uh, so it takes a little bit more skill and patience to use these products correctly. Uh, so just be aware of that if you are new to painting or you don't have a lot of experience, both of these products are going to be a little bit harder to use than if, say, you use like a pure, purely latex or like an acrylic-based paint. Um, so that's just something to be aware of as you kind of start moving into this product category. One of the things that's hard about these two products is be they both tend to run, so you're going to have a lot of drips. Um, emerald urethane drips in more predictable ways, like kind of where you would expect just if you, if you laid on too much product, it's gonna pool up in the corners of like a six panel door, window sills, things like that. Uh, but Advance drips like crazy. It has a severe case of the runs, I would say. And it tends to run places that you wouldn't expect. So a lot of times if you just paint a sill or even like the piece of trim underneath a window sill, it'll just run down the wall in spots where you wouldn't typically think that it would. So it just takes a little bit more uh, of an adjustment to get the amount to put on correct uh, with this product. Uh, so I'm gonna give workability and ease of use to emerald urethane because uh, it is just much easier to work with. Um, and I, it's, as far as like hybrids go, it's the closest to like a more standard trim paint that I've used. Uh, but it, it does take some getting used to, uh, but I find it's much easier to go back and touch up this product than advance. And that's what we're talking about. Just comparing these two, not them with other things. So round two goes to Emerald. Moving on round three. Round three fight. Round three is coverage and finish. Uh, both of these paints cover really well. Uh, I found them to be, you know, what I would expect from a high end product. Uh, most of the time, two coats with either of them is definitely going to do it. However, there I have noticed a a slight edge with Advance. Uh, I think Advance covers the best of any trim paint I have used. So if something needs three coats, you can do two. And if it needs two, a lot of times you can get away with one. One of the things as professional painters that we encounter a lot is we paint a lot of the same things over and over again. Uh, one of the things that we paint a lot of is factory primed six panel doors. And they come primed in this like khaki beige color uh, that for whatever reason doesn't cover well, usually in two coats. With the urethane, we're almost always running three. However, with Advance, we can just get away with two and it looks great. It covers, looks solid all the way through. So with coverage, I would give the advantage to Advance. And then finish. Now this is really where Advance shines. Um, to my eyes and also my brother and the guys that work with me, Advance is one of the best finishing trim paints that I've ever used. And when I say finish, I just mean what it actually looks like on a surface once it cures and dries and it looks like it's all dry and you're, you're done. Um, the reason for that is it has extended opening time and a ton of leveling agents built into this product. So because it takes so long to dry, the leveling agents have a lot of time to act. And that means if you've brushed it on or rolled it on, the paint is gonna level out and it's gonna mitigate as much of the brush strokes or roller texture um, as I've seen as possible. So it's gonna look really smooth. And what that does is has a very smooth appearance because the sheen's evenly distributed uh, across like an even uh, kind of surface all the way over. So it just, it levels out beautifully. Um, and that really contributes to it uh, having a really, really nice finish. Uh, like I said before, I have the satin version right here, which is the most commonly uh, used version of this product, at least in my area. One of the reasons for that is it gets used a lot in older farm homes, which we happen to have a lot in the area. A lot of times a semi-gloss paint can look a little out of place in older homes where the satin finish is a little softer. It feels more like a factory finish and uh, it's a little bit more muted. So it tends to do well in like older homes that have like big chunky trim and uh, things like that. So I'm gonna give, this was like a brutal round for Emerald. It got hit a lot. It just lost on both accounts. It would be like, like kind of like a, if Advance got like a flash knockout on Emerald. That's, that's what we're kind of looking at right now. So like Emerald's a little, little woozy. Needs like a little pep talk in the corner. All right. Round four, fight. Round four is all about versatility. Uh, if you've made it this far into the video, you might be asking yourself why even bother with a hybrid product? They seem awfully expensive and difficult to use. And that is a valid concern, my friend. 
but the versatility of these products really, that's kind of where they start to really shine. And one of the things that you can run into on uh, different paint jobs and uh, something we run into quite a bit as professional painters is when we go and do like, so I do all the, I do a lot of like the quotes for our residential painting and you know, usually I can determine whether or not the trim has been previously painted with an oil-based product or a latex-based product. But sometimes if you kind of like looked at it in one room, you might go into another room that you didn't look as carefully and then that might be a different product might be used. So, um, and like say you moved into a house and you're like, I'm painting everything in here. You know, a lot of times different products were used in different parts of the house. Uh, some, you know, some rooms may not have been painted forever. So you might run into a scenario where part of the room was painted with latex, part of it hasn't been repainted at all, and the old oil-based trim might still be there. So you just might run into some inconsistencies in the services that you're dealing with, which can be somewhat of an issue. And then if you went and used a regular latex-based trim paint on any of that stuff, it might not stick. Uh, something else you're gonna run into is like, stained trim or stained trim that's been polyurethaned. If you are in that scenario, then you can't go over that with a standard trim paint. You're gonna to need to use an oil-based primer or a high adhesion primer uh, to then get your latex-based product to stick. So how, with these products, the hybrids, they grip to just about anything. You can go straight over oil-based trim. You can go over something that's super glossy. You can go over, uh, you know, it, like we've gone over stained trim that hasn't been polyed. We've gone over stained trim that has been polyed and it works really well. I would still recommend that your trim be clean, dry, and dull when you go to use these products, but they are fairly generous with, uh, I would say like a lack of preparation. They're pretty good uh, right out the gate of sticking to just about anything. That being said, the emerald urethane has a little trick up its sleeve in that it is an interior and exterior product. So that starts to like edge it slightly ahead in the versatility department. Uh, it can be really, really convenient. And here's a great example of that. Uh, we paint, a, you know, we paint a lot of doors and uh, sometimes you paint a door that also opens up to the outside world, uh, particularly like a garage door or something like that. And what's really nice is that you can use the same paint, this paint, on the inside and on the outside. So that way you don't have to worry about you know, getting that nice clean line uh, in the toe or the heel. And uh, it can be really convenient just to do both sides of the exterior doors with the same product. That is a super nice feature. And if you were gonna go with the same um, trim paint color on the inside of your house and the outside of your house, then you could use this and just be dealing with one product in the entirety of your house, which is super nice. Okay, so round four goes to the Emerald. You took some shots advanced. It's all right, it's all right, it's gonna be fine. Round five, fight. All right, now we are in the fifth and final round. Both uh, paint cans have been doing pretty good. I think there are two rounds to two rounds. Both have taken some solid shots, but we're we're in the, the fifth and the championship round, if you will, uh, which is all about dry time. And let's talk about it for a second, shall we? With dry time, you're gonna see two different times on the back of any paint can. One is gonna be dry to touch, and the other is gonna be dry to recoat. When it says dry to touch, all it means is if, like how long is it before, if you put your hands on it, it's not gonna come off on your fingers. Uh, and then dry to recoat is if you need to do a second coat or a third coat, how long do you need to wait in between applying another coat of that product over top of the same product? Uh, dry to touch time on Emerald is two hours. Pretty respectable. Nothing too crazy. And the recoat time is four hours. I find that to be a little bit long for this product and uh, it's not really what we experience on the job site. Uh, most of the time we're moving things around with fans and getting things going. Um, we've gotten our recoat times down to like pretty close to two hours and it always depends on the conditions of the room. Uh, but uh, this product moves along pretty quick and you can recoat way quicker than the four hour mark. So just be aware of that. Now. Advance, uh, it's dry to touch time is four to six hours and it's recoat time is 16 hours, which is crazy long. So Advance really performs and behaves a lot like an oil-based trim paint. Uh, of all the hybrids I've used, it's the closest thing to an oil-based trim paint and that's one of the issues with oil-based is that it takes forever to dry. Uh, if you're used to running two coats on your trim in a day, which we are uh, as professional painters, we do that all the time on our job sites, uh, that's where I have a big issue with this product. 
I like a lot of things about it, but the dry time is crazy. It's super long, and I know it's a feature. It says it right on the can. It's uh, extended open time, excellent leveling. It's right on the front. I get it, but it for our workflow and for what I like doing, uh, it just the dry time is super annoying. I don't like not being able to do two coats. It really interrupts our workflow, and uh, if you have to like. If you're trying to like tape something against the trim, then it, it's really like you've got to really plan out your workflow and just know that like you've got to make that adjustment heading into your project if you're going to use this. So it's probably the biggest consideration I would say you need to like keep in mind if you're going to use this product is how long it takes to dry. And also if you're going to be putting it on a high touch surface like like I mentioned before, like a big bay window that you're going to put plants on or a mantelpiece, something like that. You really want to wait for this thing to cure all the way through, uh, which is going to take three to five days. Once it does cure, it's super hard and it can take a beating. Uh, but that's just something to be aware of uh, if you're looking for like a real quick, like, uh, I don't know if you're trying to like hustling for time on a weekend or something like that. I would uh, tend to steer away from this one. So... That to me is a fifth round knockout from uh, Emerald. So well done, Emerald. And like, hopefully we had some sort of fireball or something. I don't know. Something that looked like something happened here. But this fight is over. And that's my conclusion. So winner by fifth round knockout is Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel. You win. Perfect. Yeah. So <laughs> and that really is my conclusion. Uh, I think uh, I actually do like Advance from Benjamin Moore, but um, more for like specialty applications. Like I said before, the uh, mantle pieces, the, you know, if you're going to, if you were not going to spray and you're definitely going to hand brush cabinets, I would use Advance, furniture, things like that. Uh, it is a good product and uh, I'm not bashing it too much. It's a little bit tongue in cheek in this, uh, in this particular video. Um, but Emerald Urethane is my go-to everyday trim paint. It's a little bit overkill in some situations, but we've gotten used to using it and uh, it's what we use on the job sites almost all of the time. I really like how easy it is to work with. You can get two coats on in a day and the finish quality is pretty sweet. So there you go, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful in some way, shape, or form. Consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Bye. Amazing.